Okay, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Elizabeth Liu, and I'm the special coordinator for the Young African Leaders Initiative at the U.S. Department of State. Welcome to the Young African Leaders Initiative's 10th Anniversary Summit. We made it! Woo! It's so great to be here with you today. In 2010, 115 young leaders came to Washington for YALI's first program, the President's Forum for Young African Leaders. Today, YALI has graduated more than 24,000 alumni between the Mandela Washington Fellowship Exchange Program and the regional leadership centers on the continent. Membership in the online YALI Network community is more than 700,000 strong. That's more than the population of Bujumbura. If Wakanda were a place, it would be filled with YALIs, no doubt. Why should we care? You'll hear more about the youth bulge from other speakers, but the bottom line is Africa's youth represent Africa's future. For the past decade, YALI has empowered youth to take control of their own future. YALI's programs promote effective public administration, grow networks that connect people, create conditions for peace, prosperity, and security across the continent, and investment opportunities for U.S. businesses. YALI alumni have risen to high-ranking leadership positions and been recognized with international awards. Five alumni have held or currently hold cabinet-level positions. YALI alumni were awarded first and second prize, respectively, in Africa.com's Brilliant African Innovations Against COVID-19 Competition in 2020. And the Somali Fellowship alumna was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize in 2019. You, Africa's young leaders, are what makes YALI special. You embody YALI's service, spirit of servant leadership, a philosophy in which the main goal of the leader is to serve. This is YALI's soul. For instance, the annual YALI Serves campaign inspires network members to uphold these principles and give back to their communities each year around International Nelson Mandela Day in July. Despite the pandemic, thousands of members still found a way to give back less. YALI Serves campaign, said one network member, has developed me into a leader who is prepared to fight for all social issues in my community. It has also prepared me to be an entrepreneur, and a leading example. It has improved both my confidence and commitment to my community. D, Nelson Mandela, for whom YALI's flagship program, the Mandela Washington Fellowship is named, lives on in YALI. In my household, our favorite Mandela quote is, it always seems impossible until it's done. It's a favorite because I love to use it on my children. I have a six-year-old son, and a daughter who turns four this weekend. Whenever they are learning a new skill, like riding a bike, reading, or counting, or when they complain about cleaning up toys, I remind them that it always seems impossible until it's done. The belief in one's ability to rise up and overcome obstacles is at the core of YALI's ethos. And this decade's YALI alumni and network members are a generation of leaders who are serving their communities and breaking barriers. Become the youngest minister ever in Botswana's history at the age of 30, impossible? Not for 2011 First Ladies Forum for Young African Leaders alumna, Boholo Kenawindo. Feed thousands of vulnerable communities across Ghana, an especially important service during the pandemic, impossible? Not for Regional Leadership Center alumnus and founder of the Food for All Africa program, Elijah Amuado. Survive the harsh realities of life in a refugee camp facing extreme poverty and the dangers of snake fights and rape for 22 years and come out thriving as a women's advocate, soccer coach, and team manager for the senior and under 20 national women's teams in South Sudan. Impossible, you say? Not for 2018 Mandela Washington Fellowship alumna, Nasera Victoria. Put together a little summit for up to 15,000 young African leaders featuring more than 80 speakers, an exposition with 300 booths, entertainment and celebrity guests in the middle of a pandemic? Impossible? I don't think so. This summit would not have been possible though without the incredible support from not only our implementing partner, the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars, but also of course our YALI alumni 
who are the reason we are here today and who helped make this week's program happen. The list goes on. Yali's impact is evident as participants rise to leadership positions in business, government, and society. Make mo no mistake, Africa's youth will determine Africa's future. Yali is the key to US efforts to support these talented youth. And as we celebrate the past decade and look ahead to the future, one thing is clear. The future of not only Africa, but the world is in good hands. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you one of these talented youth, our first speaker of the day, 26 team Mandela Washington Fellowship alumnus, Joao Arnaldo Venvani. Joao has a deep understanding of the challenges to achieving social inclusion for people from vulnerable groups. He has previously served as disability advisor to the deputy president of the Mozambique National Parliament and is founder and CEO of Job Consulting, which offers consulting services on disability inclusion, public health management, and the management of projects and organizations. Over to you, Joao. You're on mute. Thank you so much, Leo, and um, thank you to the organizers of the event, the Wilson Center um, and the State Department for uh, providing me the prestige of being in this uh, event and with uh, such a uh, prestigious panel, uh, if I can say. Um, to be part of the yep. Mandela Washington Fellowship, I will try to uh, talk, I mean, to speak in the, in, on behalf of the more than 700,000 uh, youth who are doing great job uh, throughout Africa and um, uh, implementing inspiring initiatives and are participating to the program that is connecting us. And um, to say that uh, the YALI program in the last 10 years meant a lot for us in Africa. It meant uh, several opportunities. First, training opportunities uh, to improve the work that we're already doing. And um, the most important part of the training, it relates to knowing better ourselves and uh, understanding the value of the different initiatives that we're implementing throughout in our communities. And um, it helps us to think more and deeper about the impacts that we are creating uh, to, to our communities. Um, the different programs that are offered through the, um, uh, the YALI Mandela Washington Fellowship Program, the Reciprocal Exchange Program, and uh, access to grants and so many others uh, have helped us to connect with um, expert, uh, expert community that resides not only in the United States of America, but more and, uh, importantly here in Africa. I mean, we are doing a lot of work separately in our different communities. We face different challenges, but by connecting through this a massive platform, we um, learn from others and we, 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 we solve problems that we, we, we are facing in our communities, issues that we are uh, uh, um, being our barriers to, to, pro to the progress of our activities. Uh, and where one or two of other fellows or even more have already overcome in their communities. And um, so to say, the Mandela Washington Fellowship in my case, meant access to a practical example of implementation of uh, disability inclusive programs, uh, whereby I had access to the Americans with Disability Act uh, community of experts, but not, uh, but not only that, but as well the beneficiaries speaking on their own voice about what this meant for them to have the ADA. And this helped me to uh, come back to Mozambique and work together with my core um, uh, t uh, mates who have been working to advocate disabilities in Mozambique, and we are almost just a step ahead, uh, uh, just a step behind approving a national law, just like the Americans with Disability Act. This is just one of the tremendous uh, impacts that the YALI programs 
means for my, to me and to the, my fellow Mozambicans, which I believe it also means to different uh, African uh, mates within the platform. I uh, fellows who are working to promote their disability rights throughout Africa, connecting, and we built our community of disability rights uh, inclusion team. And uh, it's a growing um, platform with more than 37 uh, participants from more than 11 countries. So this is give a practical example of what does it mean to be part of this uh, huge uh, platform of great experts in what they are doing in, in, in their community. It also means, as I said, access to uh, resources uh, be technical resources, um, uh, tools to implement our work, uh, access to experts, but also access to the grants that the program uh, is opening to uh, us to have access to. There are a few of us who, through the program, had access to um, a scholarship in, uh, scholarships in university throughout the world. Uh, uh, who are now pursuing their master's degrees, their PhDs. So the, to talk about the impact of FIALI, I couldn't say in just a few words in one day. I mean, it needs more than that to speak about what it means to be a, a YALI. Um, so I hope uh, the government of the United States of America and uh, the different governments of Africa, uh, different countries in Africa, the community of the youth continue to promote this uh, this this kind of initiative, and we promote and we deepen uh, um, the, the the connection among ourselves. And um, we have give it us where is a platform we can post our um, uh, concerns, and we can have thousands of dozens of. Uh, um, uh, experts within our own community in Africa. So this is, um, I mean, I, I feel honored to be a YALI and to have access to all of these resources and platforms. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that powerful testimonial and truly practical example of the impact of YALI. I think any number of us in the room can talk all day up and down about how awesome his Yali is, but it just doesn't mean anything until somebody hears from some on the real impact that Yali has had and the connections that you've made um, in your work as a disability advocate. So thank you so much for those words. It's now my pleasure to introduce Her Excellency Hilda Suga Mapudze, the African Union Ambassador to the United States. Born in Zimbabwe, Ambassador Suka Mapudze is a seasoned diplomat and political expert with over two decades of professional experience in African affairs. Prior to her current appointment, she served as ambassador of Zimbabwe in various countries, including Sudan, South Sudan, and Malawi. As an accomplished leader, she specializes in mediation, post-conflict reconstruction, human rights, and humanitarian services or activities. Over to you, Ambassador. No, thank you. Thank you very much uh, to be uh, in this platform. Uh, I really appreciate being invited here on behalf of African Union. I, uh, I would say uh, Mrs. Dana Banks, a special assistant with the President of the United States and National Security Senior Director for Africa. Congresswoman Gregory Mix, representative of the 5th Congressional District of New York. Congress Michael McCool, representative of the 10th Congressional District of Texas. Mr. Matthew Lusenhub, Acting Assistant Secretary Bureau of Education, Educational and Cultural Affairs State Department, Ambassador Mark Green, President and CEO of Director Woodrow, Wilson International Center for Scholars. And Mr. Joao Arnoldo Vahambe, Yale Alumni and Founder and CEO of YAV Consulting, Youth and Invitees in this summit. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, greetings from the African Union. The African Union recognizes the tremendous support the U.S. government is providing, which positively impacts the lives of the youth. As a result of YALI initiatives, Africa is witnessing a remarkable favor in young women and men who are engaged in public service and working with their local communities. YALI programs have transformed our youth as a result of trainings, networking opportunities, 
In the professional development, these youth are playing significant roles, such as establishing non-governmental organizations, startup business ventures, and taking charge of government policy frameworks, let alone being entrepreneurs. I want to acknowledge the United States for this undertaking that has empowered our youth through regional centers established in Ghana, Senegal, Kenya, South Africa, most importantly, not forgetting the Mandela Washington Fellowship and the YALI Network. I'm grateful that the organizers and sponsors of this summit have gathered the beneficiaries to celebrate this noble accomplishment. Again, echoing the unwavering support of the United States government to Africa and Union member countries, I cannot forget to mention particularly the support dur during COVID-19 pandemic, which has sadly taken millions of people globally and has negatively affected the world's economy. The United States support is helping to combat this pandemic, uh, predominantly in health and humanitarian sectors, which are essential to economic recovery to the recipient countries, which also is an area that is affecting the youth. The relationship between uh, United States and Africa has existed for long. The role it plays in education, increased enrollments in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, subjects, language, and cultural exchanges are opening doors of this population to, stage, to a stage of a global citizenry. The U.S. government assistance to strengthen primary education and technical training opportunities for youth to the most African Union member states is a foundation from which, which youth development is, a built, is being built. Ladies and gentlemen, Africa has instituted measures that guarantee youth engagement, which dovetail with the early programs. One of the key continental measures is the youth charter. This youth charter was established to serve as a strategic framework to guide actions of each African Union member country towards youth development and was adopted in 2006. As it is stated by the African Union, the charter is a political and legal framework which serves the purpose of providing a strategic framework and direction for youth empowerment and development activities at continental, regional, and national levels across Africa. The Charter shows Africa's key commitment to the empowerment of this generation by the member states and government. The African Union has a responsibility to make sure all partakers, including regional bodies and civil society, move and work in a harmonized way. Another major commitment to engage youth in Africa and the prudent measures, measure that guides us to ensure inclusion include Agenda 2063. Aspiration 6 of this 50-year development blueprint clearly states, in Africa, whose development is people-driven, relying on the potential of African people, is where it's women and youth and caring for children. Again, this blueprint emphasizes active involvement of the young African in decision-making in all spheres of their lives. Agenda 2063 ensures inclusive content where no child, woman, or man is left behind or excluded based on the gender, political affiliation, religion, ethnic affiliation, locality, age, or the factors, and of vital significance in this aspiration is full gender equality in all spheres of life. Ladies and gentlemen, engaged and empowered youth and children all aiming at creating opportunities for Africa's youth to ensure self-realization, access to health, education, jobs, safety, and security of Africa's children, and provide for early childhood development is key to all leaders of our continent, Africa. Africa's plan for this youth is harmonized with sustainable development goals, SDGs of the, of the United Nations. And furthermore, aspiration six of our generations, which, just, which I have just stated, links with SDGs as follows. Aspiration six, engaged and empowered youth and children, prioritizing youth empowerment in children's rights in relation to, to this aspiration. The SDGs state ensuring inclusive and equitable quality education and promotion of lifelong learning opportunities for all. Partnerships with the United States government through initiatives with the early facilitate this process. 
a word of encouragement for you, my sons and daughters. I must say, in Zimbabwe, we say, Akuruman Zevende Wako, the one who gives you advice and is on your side and helping you to get there in life. Take advice from your leaders and your members and then over to be your best. Our continent is you is our fame foundation. Let me end on a key point of gratitude. I thank the United States government through the State Department and Wilson International Center for Scholars for their support for African youth through the YALI program, whose noble contribution to our continent's advancement is being celebrated today. On behalf of the chairperson of the African Union, Eti Mustafaki Muhammad, and the entire leadership of the African Union Commission, I appreciate the excellent relationship that exists between the United States and the entire continent. Go Yali, go. I thank you for your kind attention. I wish you a successful summit. Thank you. Thank you so much for those words, Ambassador Sikamapuze. Go Yali, go. Woo! <laughs> Uh, we very, very much appreciate the African Union's support in YALI and support in African youth, empowering them, as you said, uh, to take their own direction in life, to control their own futures in the areas of health, education, economic empowerment, and more. Uh, the African Union's Youth Congress was invited to join today, so I hope that many of them are here. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you Ambassador Mark Green, the President director and CEO of the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. Prior to joining the Wilson Center, Ambassador Green served as executive director of the McCain Institute, administrator of the U.S. Agency for International Development, and U.S. Ambassador to Tanzania. Prior to that, he also served four terms in the U.S. House of Representatives, representing Wisconsin's 8th District. Ambassador Green. Great, thanks Elizabeth. Uh, as you just heard, I'm Mark Green and on behalf of the Wilson Center, I'm proud to welcome all of you to YALI's 10th anniversary summit. We're grateful to the State Department for this opportunity to join them in hosting this historic gathering. Even more, we're excited, truly excited to join with all of you, young people who represent not only Africa's future, but in so many ways, the future of the world as well. Of course, we all wish we were meeting in person to celebrate and plan and rededicate ourselves to YALI's mission, to the cause of Africa, helping Africa claim its bright future. We hope and pray that the opportunity to gather in person will come one day soon. On the other hand, I for one am grateful that we're able to use the tools of technology to bring together friends of Africa like never before. Today's summit has convened leaders from across the U.S. government, from the White House and President Biden to Congress, to the State Department and more, and from throughout Africa's diplomatic core. Most importantly, it has brought together you, more than 15,000 young people from all across Africa, north and south and east and west. Zhao put it very well when he said that this is a massive platform. In the few moments that I have, I want to share why this summit is a special moment for me personally as well. You see, I began my own work in Africa some 30 years ago when I served as a teacher in a small Harambe school in East Africa, a school with no electricity for its classroom or glasses, glass for its windows, a school where some classes had only one textbook for 10 or so students, a school so poor that the headmaster would send students home if their families fell behind in the school fees that we needed to keep our doors open. I remember the first time it happened in a class that I was teaching. I remember the headmaster coming around and reading off some names and then students quietly and very, very sadly standing up and then walking out the door. I remember going back to the chalkboard and and continuing to write lessons. And then I heard a noise and I looked over my shoulder and I saw some of those students sneaking back into my classroom. Well, when I look into your eyes, young leaders of Africa, I think of those students and their children who are now in school. I think of what you can do for them. And if I 
may say what you must do for them, what you owe them. After all, you are the fortunate ones, the ones who have been entrusted with the opportunity to build a much brighter future, a future that is more peaceful, a future that doesn't walk away from challenges like building a greener economy, a future that is more inclusive and respectful of others regardless of their background, a future that harnesses the brain power of Africa's youth to create new economic opportunities and wondrous new technologies for the whole world around you, a future that lifts up the human condition and reinforces human dignity. Those students that I taught are counting on you. We are all counting on you. You can do great things. And this summit and Yali's mission can help you get there. So enjoy this time together. Enjoy the fellowship and take every advantage that you can. This is your moment and we're all cheering you on. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thank you, Ambassador, for those wonderful remarks. And absolutely, you know, in uh, before the pandemic began, we were thinking about doing a conference on the continent, and we thought, well, maybe we can have 500 max. But here we are today with up to 15,000 young African leaders. No one ever would have imagined that it was possible. Um, and so we're so grateful for this technology and the opportunity to engage with so many people. And yes, the Yali generation is ready. They are willing to serve, to support those children and so many others. Uh, Jawu is just one of so many examples of our wonderful alumni. I'd now like to introduce a series of video guests who we have here today. First is Acting Assistant Secretary of State for the Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, Matthew Lusenhop. Then Congressman Meek, Gregory Meeks, Chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman Michael McCall, Republican Leader of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. And last but not least, Dana Banks, Special Assistant to the President and National Security Council Senior Director for Africa at the White House. Thank you. Over to you for the videos. Hello, my name is Matt Lessenhop, and I'm the Acting Assistant Secretary of State for the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, and I'm pleased to join you today and congratulate the Young African Leadership Initiative on its 10-year anniversary. Our Bureau has implemented the Mandela Washington Fellowship, an important component of YALI since 2014, and the program has an immense impact on our participants and on economic development in Sub-Saharan Africa. As Secretary of State Antony Blinken noted last month in his discussion with YALI alumni, the best way to prepare communities for massive challenges like the pandemic is building resilience, expanding opportunity, and strengthening local voices of rising leaders. We're proud that the Mandela Washington Fellowship is contributing to these goals through in-person and online learning opportunities. Last year, we created 22 online courses for our alumni and the 2021 cohort. And we look forward to seeing how the 2021 fellows continue to grow, adapt, and become more effective servant leaders during their virtual full program this year. Exchange programs develop networks and provide new opportunities. And you'll hear later this week about two 2019 fellowship alumni Alexandra Neshemie Mana from Rwanda and Jerry Mangena from Tanzania. They connected with a Texas-based business during their exchange and they're now exporting seaweed to the United States. I hope their story will inspire you to explore networking opportunities. With thousands of summit participants this week, you may find a new partner through the conference platform. You can also share lessons learned with your colleagues following the program to expand YALI's impact. And I look forward to learning how this summit impacts young leaders across Africa. And we hope that YALI inspires you for many years to come. Happy birthday, YALI.
House Foreign Affairs Committee. And welcome to the 10th year anniversary summit of the Young African Leaders Initiative, where we celebrate the achievements of YALI alumni. First, I would like to thank the State Department in partnership with the Africa Program of the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars for this invitation to address you all today. As a longtime supporter of investment in African youth, I am proud to have been an active supporter of and a witness to what America's enduring commitment to African youth has helped YALI alumni accomplish over the last 10 years. Since 2010, YALI has provided Africa's youth with the tools required to become agents of change, helping build models of good governance, transparency, economic growth, and peace building. And as a result, YALI alumni continue to lead the way in civic engagement, entrepreneurship, and innovation. Many of our African partners face challenges today, but there are just as many good news stories and promising opportunities all over the continent. So we should all be encouraged that YALI with the support of the United States, promotes the values of democracy and human rights throughout the continent of Africa. These values are the cornerstone of sustainable development and growth. Thanks to the efforts of the State Department and USAID, key YALI initiatives are connecting Americans and Africans in the pursuit of professional development and leadership opportunities. I look forward to seeing the Mandela Washington Fellowship resume, connecting hundreds of gifted African youth with opportunities to develop leadership skills at colleges and universities all across the country. Those skills are put to good use in their home countries and represent the promise of strong African civil societies, trusted public institutions, and a thriving private sector. The regional leadership centers are an important example of what public-private partnerships can do to mobilize resources and drive regional collaboration in Africa. These initiatives have also helped YALI grow over the last decade to elevate public awareness of important issues such as climate change and green energy, anti-corruption, voting, and civic participation along with community health, just to name a few. One of my top priorities is to strengthen partnerships between the United States and Africa, especially when it comes to trade, investment, and economic growth. YALI has proven to be an important part of that process. And as chairman of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs, I will continue to support the role of Congress in ensuring that YALI has the resources it needs to be effective for years to come. So thank you again for inviting me to share in this celebration of YALI's 10th anniversary with all of you. It is indeed an honor to be part of a collective effort to help YALI have another successful decade ahead. Thank you and enjoy the celebration. I wanna send my sincere congratulations to the Young African Leaders Initiative or YALI on its 10th anniversary. Nearly one out of every three Africans are between the ages of 10 and 24. They are the future of the African continent. Access to education, vocational training and jobs, just like here in the United States, will be even more critical to support this growing youth population. Programs like YALI aren't just effective diplomacy, they are an investment in future generations of African leaders. Because of YALI, we have welcomed nearly 4,400 young leaders from every country in Sub-Sahara Africa to the United States since 2014. These impressive individuals go back to their home countries and they grow their business, they work in government, and they become leaders in their communities. So I'm proud the University of Texas at Austin has hosted a cohort of Mandela Washington Fellows 
every summer. And I look forward to welcoming many more Yali fellows to experience my home district in the years to come. Good morning, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here with you all today, although virtually, but to celebrate the 10th anniversary of our extraordinary Young African Leaders Initiative, better known as YALI. First, I'd like to thank some of our speakers who you've heard from this morning. Congressman Gregory Meeks, the chair of our House Foreign Affairs Committee. Matthew Lusenhop, Acting Assistant Secretary for the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. Suka Mafuduze, African Union Ambassador to the United States. And Ambassador Mark Green, President and CEO of the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars all of whom are true advocates for our US Africa policy. And I want to thank them for their participation. YALI is one of my favorite presidential initiatives. When I served as public affairs officer in Tanzania, I selected the first slate of Tanzanian YALI participants in 2014. And it's amazing to see how the YALI network has expanded over the years. And as you all know, YALI is also one of our most robust and oldest regional youth initiatives. With a population of 1.3 billion people whose median age is 19 years old, equipping African youth with opportunities to strengthen their potential is at the core of the United States partnership with Africa. Even as Africa continues to confront many challenges, such as the pandemic of COVID-19 and long-standing conflicts, the continent is still on the move. And I am glad technology has made it possible for us to connect today. By 2050, Africa's population is expected to rise to 2 billion people. With hundreds of millions of mobile phones, digital technology, and surging access to the internet, Africans are beginning to leapfrog old technologies into new prosperity. And young people like you will be driving so much of the continent's progress because Africa is the youngest continent in terms of demographics. By supporting YALI, we intend to work with the public sector, the private sector, and civil society partners across the continent to develop economic opportunities to harness this innovation and energy of Africa's youth. You may recall President Biden's address to the African Union Summit earlier this year, his first address to foreign leaders and his administration. In that address, President Biden said, we must all work together to advance our shared vision of a better future a future of growing trade and investment that advances prosperity for all our nations, a future that advances lives of peace and security for all our citizens. To achieve this future, the Biden-Harris administration will continue to engage regularly, openly, and as partners in pursuing our shared interests and values. We have much in common and much we want to achieve together, whether it's on security, global health, trade and investment, climate change, or human rights and democracy. It is through exchanges like YALI that the Biden-Harris administration will continue to reinvigorate and restore our partnerships across the continent. We aim to build substantive reciprocal relationships with African governments, businesses, civil society organizations, and with young people like yourselves who are the future, and in some cases, current leaders of these institutions. So this summit will highlight and celebrate the achievements of the YALI Alumni Network and its members while demonstrating the United States' enduring commitment to Africa's youth. The summit will also provide new opportunities for skills development, networking, mentoring, 
and collaboration, as well as an opportunity for YALI alumni to define a collective vision for their future. Over the next five days, you will all celebrate YALI's impact and provide opportunities to connect with notable speakers. So I encourage you, enjoy this time, make the most of it, and congratulations on 10 years of YALI. May the next 10 years see exponential growth in the number of YALI fellows living on the continent and leading across the world. We look forward to many more years of engaging Africa's youth. Thank you and enjoy the summit. All right, I wanna thank all of our speakers today. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to see so much support from YALI from so many places, the African Union, bipartisan support in Congress, the White House and interagency, of course, our implementing partner, the Woodrow Wilson Center. YALI is just an easy program to love and support, and we really look forward to the next generation. If you're not already, get excited! It's going to be an amazing week. We got Serge Ibaka, NBA star, coming up later on today. Fabulous opportunities for networking, professional development workshops, policy workshops, entertainment, of course. We have it all. So please stay with us this week. Celebrate, connect, and join us to envision the next decade of YALI. I, it is now my pleasure to turn things over to Dr. Monde Muyangwa or as we call her, Mama Africa. One day is the director of the Wilson Center's Africa program. She's visited more than 30 African countries to leverage her experience to address the continent's most critical issues, as well as US-Africa relations. Previously, the longtime academic dean at the Africa Center for Strategic Studies at the National Defense University, she has been a professor, a nonprofit leader, a development consultant, and a Rhodes Scholar. And Mama Africa has played an integral role in making this program happen. So shout out to her. Thank you so much for all of your support, to your team, for all of the hard work. There's a lot of you out in the background. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. It's all coming together. Um, and let's look forward to a wonderful week. Over to you, Monday. Thank you. Thank you so much, Liz, and uh, good afternoon, good day, good evening to everyone, wherever you're joining us from. But please just join me for now in giving a huge, huge thank you to all of our speakers at this morning's uh, welcome ceremony. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You all, you got us off to such a powerful start, and we are excited for what is to come uh, over the next five days. And I hope for those of you who are tuning in from the continent and around the world, that what you got from this opening ceremony is a tremendous support for YALI. Uh, just to reiterate what my colleague Liz was just talking about, from all levels of the US government, uh, from Congress, the White House, uh, Department of State, and even a public-private partnership such as the Woodrow Wilson Center. So I hope you got that. I'm also hoping that what you saw here was African leadership's commitment to youth and to uh, the YALI program. Uh, for me, it is especially uh, important to have Ambassador Suka Mafuze here, symbolically someone who is speaking on behalf of the African Union and on behalf of the continent, really urging you on and uh, to own the continent. It is yours to craft into the that you have for Africa. And we are with you as a US government and partners to help you realize uh, that vision. I also want to thank uh, Zhao Vembani. I think you spoke for so many of the YALI recipients. It's not so much what those who are funding YALI says it is doing. It is what you, the beneficiaries, say that it is doing, what you've been able to accomplish through YALI. And I think that definitely uh, uh, came through. And I want to give a shout out at this point. I want to let all of those who are tuning in from around the world know that we hear you. So let me just pick on about 10 names that I am seeing who are contributing to the session already uh, in the discussion group. Tony Obala, we hear you. Evangelina Nguema, we see you. Chidi Ehubu, we see you. 
Mohammed Lamine, we see you as well. Mina Farid, Haruk Mawes, Nina Rosafiranova, Kandeka Banda, Ruben um, Patina, and Rungurirai Makuku. So we see you, you are engaged, and we love that. Please encourage, keep up the engagement. We will be responding to you uh, in other sessions. But just building on on what was talked about in the opening ceremony uh, this morning, we want to showcase, this is a celebration, right? 10 years of YALI. We want to build on on Vembani's remarks to showcase what YALI has um, accomplished and what it, how it has impacted uh, the continent and the beneficiaries over the last 10 years. So we will do that now by taking you on a video tour across the continent. We will go from West Africa to Central Africa, to East Africa, to Southern Africa, to hear from YALI alumni in their own words, speak and share with you how YALI has impacted their lives, their communities, and their countries. Roll the tape, please. Yeah, that's impacted my life in so many ways. During my fellowship, I was able to learn how to network with people. And this has brought so much opportunity for me. Example, like when I came back in 2017, I was able to um, organize a GoFundMe where my friends, where, who I meet in America and around the world, they were able to donate. And also I was able to, uh, to learn how to write a grant. You know, after my coming back, I was able to write, I was able to win grants from the US Embassy and other organizations. For example, like I was able to win a grant from the US Embassy to organize the first female basketball league in my region. I was also able to um, win a grant to organize a campaign during the COVID-19, which has impacted so many lives. And uh, furthermore, I was also able to meet people at the uh, conference who are working in different countries, like Teach for All, who has invited me in India and Nepal to be able to share my story. How Yali has shaped me really has been through instilling the principles of servant leadership and impacting more than just my life. And what I appreciate really the most is how it has shifted my thinking towards really building and living for more than just me, but for a bigger purpose. And I'll forever be grateful because my time at um, the University of Notre Dame truly helped shape uh, Lenoma Legal and our thinking and our strategy. Uh, after the fellowship managed to go on and do amazing things, including writing a book, winning international awards. And I don't think some of those things would have been possible had I not been exposed to the type of um, training that we did. Delhi has impacted my life by giving me the knowledge and skills, the tools, exposure, and network to be able to impact my community and my country. I'm forever grateful for this opportunity. YALI has impacted my life and my community by enabling me with the skills to lead my team in establishing a self-funded community library and resource center in the Jewish community, supporting access to education for children and skills training programs for women in the Poso Town, Hastings and Grattan communities in the Western Area Rural District. As a young woman with a physical disability and an advocate for disability rights, YALI has impacted my life, my community and my country by helping me understand how to effectively engage with organizations of persons with disabilities and the government to address the challenges that persons with disabilities are facing.
I have effectively contributed to advocacy for policy change in health, education, social protection, among others, to include the needs of people with disabilities. These changes will definitely go a long way in mainstreaming disability in Malawi. Firstly, he has been able to expose me to connections I believe I would have never met in my lifetime. He has been able to help me with the skills needed to upgrade my alternative view radio project and initiative that I started before joining the YALI program. But today, that station has been able to be upgraded with the needed skills and has been able to reach out to over 300,000 listeners in rural Liberia. I've also been able to have three Americans from Boise to join my board of directors at the Alternative Youth Radio. YALI has impacted my life in such a way that it has helped me improve my networking skills and has also given me opportunities of collaboration with the other youth on the African continent. Since its inception in 2010, the YALI network has grown in strength to over 200,000 young Nigerians including 3,000 alumni of the Regional Leadership Program and 400 Mandela Washington Fellows. Through the Yali Initiative, we have advocated for disability rights, campaigned for peaceful and credible elections, and promoted our shared values. Thanks to Yali, we are making positive change to spur growth and prosperity, strengthen democratic governance, and enhance peace and security in Nigeria. We look forward to sharing with you even greater achievements and stronger ties between Nigeria and the United States in the years ahead. Congratulations on the 10th anniversary of the YALI Network and see you at the 20th. YALI has impacted my life in so many ways. I remember getting on the YALI program in 2014 without any kind of business experience. I was looking to build sustainability in my enterprise and YALI showed me the way. I learned business and entrepreneurship from the University of Texas. I was able to get my work, hand, work experience at the United Nations Foundation from where I got seed funding from USCDF to kickstart mother's delivery kits. Effectively, Yali moved me from a 30 kit producing company to a more than 500,000 kit producing company, effectively impacting more than a million mothers and their babies. Today, we have expanded, setting up businesses to support our work with mothers and their babies. We currently have colorful giggles, which provides nutrition dense meals for children under the age of four. All this would not have been possible without the background, the support, the mentoring and the funding provided by YALI. With YALI, I know that it never truly ends. The program continues to give and give and give. You know, we, we tend to shy away from political leadership in our different spaces, you know, be it entrepreneurship, be it creative industries like mine, you know, and going through the, the Mandela Washington Fellowship taught me how to, to look for that kind of uh, sense of responsibility in myself you know, to not just be uh, um, complaining about problems on social media and the like, but to actually step up and fill those boardroom tables um, so that our voices um, are heard. It is said that the one can go without food for about 40 days, without water for about three days, without air for about eight minutes, but only for one second without hope. This is why I think that one of the greatest gifts of the Young African Leaders Initiative is the fact that it is reigniting hope in the future leadership of our continent, countries, and communities. Priming the canvas of the future of Africa with hope is what I call it. By bringing together young, promising leaders from all across Africa and cultivating various values such as integrity and accountability in them, the initiative is investing in one of the most valuable but often overlooked resources on the African continent, its people. I doubt the world is ready for what this palette of talented leaders has to offer. For those who've gone through the initiative's various programs, we've gained so much that it all seems surreal that it could have come from a mere month or so of learning and serving besides other inspiring dreamers, doers, and thinkers. In my case, I not only made countless friends 
owing to my love for learning languages, I also gained a mentor that I absolutely love and look up to. I then witnessed the power of networking when the following year I got to serve as an international conservation and restoration volunteer for seven months with an environmental NGO in Seattle, Washington that a fellow participant had once worked with. As you can see, the world of possibilities that a single opportunity like the Mandela Washington Fellowship can unveil is simply astounding. Like those who brought the program into being, I pray that the lessons we learned will bear wonderful fruit in the future. Most of all, I hope that we will remember that we are leaders, not because we deserve the titles and roles, but because we are ready to serve. And that as the little Swahili rhyme I wrote in my diary goes, Uongozi sio kitu cha kukalia, ila ni mti wa kukalilia. I would usually translate that as saying that leadership is not a throne to sit on. Rather, it is more like planting a tree in whose shade others will sit. Wow, I am just, um, I, I, I've seen that a few times and I am moved each and every single time I see it. And so, I mean, to all of you, uh, just join me uh, in giving a hand wherever you are in the world to the young uh, Yali alumni who participated in that. But I also just wanna say to you that this is just a very small glimpse of what Yali uh, is doing uh, around the continent. And I hope that you see that, you feel that, and that I hope that the rest of you can also bring your stories, which we are seeing in the session uh, chat group. So many stories of impact, and this is what it's all about. And throughout the week, we will be celebrating all of you with your um, impact stories. We know there are thousands of these impact stories across the continent. And we hope you will tell those stories, you will share them with us, uh, because not only do they give us energy, not only do they inspire others, not only does it make your other Yali alumni feel like they're not in the trenches by themselves, but there's this army of Yalians across the continent who are out there doing good work. So please keep it up. At the same time, it gives those of us who are of older generation much hope in terms of what you are bringing to the continent. I am reminded of this African saying as somebody who was born on the African continent. I know that your, where your umbilical cord is buried gives you an obligation to place. So with all of you born on the continent, what I see are young people across the continent who are embracing that responsibility, who are embracing that obligation to envision and shape the Africa that you want to see and that you want to leave for the generation. So please keep it up, so, so proud, and let's keep um, going. What we will do now is in our 30 mark, but I will, just take a couple of minutes. I know you've been sitting for a long time. So if you just take a couple of minutes to stretch your legs and uh, get back online at about 9.33, or shall we start right away, Sharazad and Hannah, and then give them a break at the end, which works best? Uh, I would say just start. Okay, so I've been told by the back that we should, we're going to start and go right into uh, into the keynote, and then we hope to give you a little break uh, before we start uh, this the next session. So we're going to go right into the keynote right now, and I am um, I know that you will be super excited to hear from our keynote speaker. He, like all of you, is a son of the soil for the males and a daughter, and a, sorry, and a son of the soil, 
and a citizen of the soil back on the continent. He continues to invest and make a positive difference on the beautiful continent. All we're going to say is that please note that this is going to be pre-recorded uh, remarks in terms of the keynote, but we encourage you to keep engaging and sharing your comments in the chat box. Uh, the interviewer will be online in the chat and he will be able to respond and interact with you. And with that, let me turn it over to the keynote. Roll the tape, please. <laughs> 